The policeman on the corner is a good symbol for law. Like the policeman, law directs us in doing the right things to live together in harmony. And law forbids us from doing the wrong things that tend to destroy that social harmony. But law is more than the policeman on the corner. More than the courthouse where our laws are enforced. More than the jail where lawbreakers are punished. Law is one of three forms of social control which regulate our daily lives. Custom, what we usually do. Moral code, what we should do. And law, what we must do. Now just how do these social controls affect us? Well, in the teen canteen in our town, we'll find part of the answer to that question. You see, the canteen is always busy early in the evening. But on weeknights, the crowd thins out gradually. So when the clock approaches closing time, things quiet down in a hurry. The club has its own laws about closing and the members obey them. After closing time, you won't find anyone there, except for the three members whose turn it is to clean up. But did I say three? Just us, Betty? Aren't there always three on the cleanup committee? Yes. I wonder who's missing. If it's that Jack McGregor again. It is. I've heard he always ducks out early. It's bad enough with three to clean out, but only two. And he's supposed to be business manager of the canteen. You know, Betty, I'm going to bring this up at the business meeting tomorrow. I'll show that Jack McGregor. I meant to tell you and Betty, honest, Jane. My dad insisted that I be in the house by 11 o'clock. Can't you explain to him? He wouldn't want you to run out on your responsibility. Would he? Take it easy. We're not getting anywhere this way. Staying to clean up is a problem with a lot of us. Even though I'm the chairman of the canteen, I've had to skip cleanup duty to keep from being out too late. Say, maybe weeknights we ought to close the canteen earlier. You'll never get anyone to agree to that. I don't know. Maybe that is the answer. Tell you what, let's meet again when we can have our advisors in to help us work this thing out. As you know, our civic association has been with you from the start. I believe I can speak for the association and as your advisor in recommending that it would be very wise for you to close the canteen on weeknights at 10.30 instead of 11. After all, that's customary in our town. The drug stores, ice cream stores, most of the places of business are closed by that time, and, well, it seems to me that you might close, too. The theater stays open later than 11. But we're not a theater. Some people may question our behavior when we keep the canteen open till 11. I don't think it's right for us to stay out so late. Who's to say what's right? We know what's good for us. Nobody has to stay here till 11, just because the canteen is still open. There's no law that says you have to stay or you have to go. You're a lawyer, Mr. Parks. There's no law, is there? No, Jack, I don't think there is. Now. But I have heard people talking about your late hours here. You'd better realize that the town could pass a law which would compel you to close at 10.30 or 10 or even 9. You see, whatever the community decides is best for itself usually becomes law. The community? Well, aren't we part of the community? Oh, of course you are, Jack. But thinking of the community as a whole... Well, I wouldn't like to see our town pass a curfew law, as some other towns have. Don't you think it would be better for the community and for you if the canteen were to pass its own law to close weeknights at 10.30? And so Jack is learning about social controls. It's customary, said Mrs. Brown. It's right, said Jane. It's the law, said Mr. Parks. Yes, they can all see how these social controls, custom, moral code, and law have always played a part in the activities of the teen canteen. Here, as in our general society, there are a great many customs, and we accept them. 
Customs of dressing, we're neat and clean. Customs of courtesy, we're thoughtful of others. What happens if we violate a custom? It isn't serious. Perhaps we simply lose a little prestige. Nevertheless, customs do control us. We make a habit of following them. And then there are moral codes, sometimes called the mores. These are society's standards about what we should and should not do. They are more deeply ingrained in us. We simply don't cheat in games. We and the society in which we live think that's the proper way. In the canteen, there's no drinking or gambling. That's in line with the moral code of this group. And what happens if we break the moral codes? Well, anyone who breaks these loses social status. He no longer belongs. He's an outcast. And then there's law. Let's return to that business meeting where a new law or rule has been under consideration. It seems we have four good reasons for setting the closing time of the canteen at 10.30 on weeknights. For the convenience of the cleanup committee, we need an earlier closing hour. Then there's the custom in the town. And some feel that it's not right for us to stay out late. Finally, we want to be sure that we stay within the laws of the town so that we can continue to govern ourselves without outside interference. With all these reasons, I'm sure the majority of canteen members will vote for 10.30 closing. What do you say? I think it's the only thing to do. I'll agree. Well, we're only advisors. You make your own laws. But I think you'll find that your new law is a good law. Law is a whole body of rules for our conduct made by representatives of the people and enforced by established means. We all know that there are many don'ts in the laws we make. Law prohibits what the majority decide is wrong. Law directs what is agreed to be right. Laws require you to go to school so that you and society will benefit and laws provide the schools for you to attend. Thus, every day you come in contact with social controls, with custom, with moral code, and with law. Suppose this were you. What social controls affect you? Well, in your family, and your school, and your church. In your whole community, there are customs and moral codes which guide your actions. Many of these customs and mores are enacted into formal laws. The town or city in which you live has laws which control you. There are state laws passed and enforced by state governments. And the federal government in your name makes laws which affect you. And we are hopefully working toward a still higher level of law. The law of nations united for world peace. You are guided by all these laws and controls. The new law for closing at 10.30 was agreed upon by a majority of the members of the teen canteen. The good law because it agrees with the customs, the moral codes, and the laws of this group and of this community. In a democracy, such laws and social controls belong to the people who live under them. These laws are yours to make wisely, to change intelligently, to understand and live by.